week long meeting, so I figure out a way to cut down on the give and take. I'll give, you take. I'm not saying there's cause for alarm, but I would like to get a little constructive hysteria going. There's a drop in the ratings. Again. How far? Go ahead, Mary, read them. Uh, let's see, six o'clock news. Last week we were a 1.1, .1, uh, uh. and then we plummeted down to a 1.0. Well, what does that mean? An entire family of midgets tuned us out? <laughs> Look, a drop in the ratings may not seem like a big deal to you, but if it continues this way, I could lose my job. Nobody went, oh! Oh, Mr. Grant. We're losing the young audience. Gee, I don't know why. I like the show. I mean, I watched it even before I came to work here. You're not young anymore. I, I'm, I'm not? Uh, Check the ratings book. It's broken down into age groups. Young is 18 to 29. You don't make it anymore. I, I don't. Hi, gang. I heard there was a big powwow going on here. It's our ratings, Ted. Oh, are they up? Does this look like a celebration? Now, does anybody have any suggestions about improving the show? Improving the show? Well, we could make it longer. Oh, no, Ted, you've missed the point. If it's not doing too hot now, that would make it not doing too hot stretched out. Hey, look, look. Why don't we all write out on slips of paper what we feel the main drawback of the show is and then have them read anonymously? Why anonymously? So that Ted's feelings won't be hurt. <laughs> Ted Baxter? Uh, you. Got some mail for you here. Fan mail, I guess. Fan mail for a newscaster? Oh, that crazy, kooky American public. <laughs> Fan mail. Only in America. Here you go. That's it, <laughs> sir. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am? Ma'am? You mean me? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. This kid. Well, no, he wasn't even a kid. He must have been 21 or 22 years old. He comes over to me, and he calls me ma'am. Ma'am. Mm, your first time? Yeah. Not only that, I found out that our rating service has declared me officially over the hill. <laughs> That's nothing. When I turned 21 and still wasn't married, my mother officially declared me an old maid. I think she had it notarized. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Roberta, let's stop this. You know, if there's one thing that's worse than being single, it's sitting around talking about being single. So uh, let's change the subject to something a little more pleasant, huh? Like uh, pollution? <laughs> this is important, Mayor. There are many single women who've lived perfectly fulfilled lives. Who? I'm getting a pencil and a piece of paper and make a list. No, no, Rhoda, I am not about to sit around and make lists of single women. We're not. We're going to make lists of single men to go out with. We go out all the time. Yeah, but when was the last time you went out with someone really terrific? Well, last time for me was when my father took me to a ball game. <laughs> Come in. Hi, Mary. Hi. I just came up to bring back the ice cubes I borrowed. I didn't need them after all. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a, a bag of water, Phyllis. Oh, oh, I stopped downstairs to talk to Mildred for a few minutes. Uh, you want me to refreeze them for you? Uh, no, no, this is fine, thank you. What's that, a word game thing? Oh, it's nothing, really. It's a, we, can, we can do it later. <laughs> We're trying to think of men to go out with. That was Rhoda Morgenstern with the 8 o'clock news. <laughs> Listen, if you really want to go out with someone fantastic look in your own backyard, Ted Baxter. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I might have been kind of bowled over by his good looks in the beginning, but uh, he's good looking in that... Mmm, good-looking way. He always looks to me like he's posing for a postage stamp. First impressions can really be so wrong. Like Lars and me. Did I ever tell you? When I first met him? No, I don't oh. think so. When I first met him... Oh, this sounds ridiculous. Oh, I know you're gonna think I'm insane. <laughs> when I first met Lars, I used to think he was boring. <laughs> We just couldn't be happier, and we've been married 10 or 11 years. Hey, come on now, let's think. What man in your life, it could have been a long time ago, or someone you just met, do you wish you knew better? Well, there was this professional dancer. Not you, <laughs> Mary, come on, there must have been somebody. Anyone recently? No? Well, think back then. No? Yes, there was. Remember Mary Howard Arnell? Howard Arnell. Oh, Phyllis, how did you even come?
come up with that name? Well, Lars ran into him a little while ago. He's still single. He still asks about you. Oh, he was wild about Mary. But then that settles it. Now all we need is someone for me. What, what do you mean that settles it? Well, I have an idea for someone, but nah, it's too crazy. Then again, maybe it isn't. Do you remember how wild he was about you? Listen, Rhoda, nothing is settled. Come on, Phyllis, it was four years ago. I, I hardly remember him. He was wild about her. Listen, Mary, if you call yours, I'll call mine. And my whole thing is crazy. All right. What's yours? Mine is this guy I ran over. <laughs> he had a cleft chin. Oh, he was adorable. This guy you ran over? Yeah, uh, it was a couple of days ago. But he wasn't hurt. His arm was just a little grazed. Although his briefcase was totaled. <laughs> we got to talking and uh, exchanged phone numbers. Ah, here it is. Armand Linton. So what do you think? You don't know this man outside of hitting him with your car? No. And I know you're going to think I'm kidding, but you can really get close to someone fast when you hit him with a car. <laughs> you can't just get to know someone over coffee, can you? Uh, you're not going to believe this, Phyllis, but when I first hit him, I thought he was boring. <laughs> so, Mary, what do you think? Look, we're not doing a thing tomorrow night. Let's call Howard and Armand. What do I think? You want to call up a man you hit with your car, and I'm supposed to call up someone I hardly remember? I... There's not much to think about. I'm not going to do it. Oh, good. Bess is having her first pajama party tomorrow night, and you can come down and help. We're having 19 of her little friends over. You can even come early and help blow up the air mattresses. Well, actually, Phyllis, I didn't say that I was definitely not going to call Howard. But, um, you know, I I if I don't, then I'd be glad to come and help you blow up the uh, 18 air mattresses. 19? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I won't be there. My mother's going to take care of the kids. Lars and I, we're going to spend a night in a hotel. <laughs> right here. Right here. Howard Arnell. Now, come on, Mary. We both said we have nothing to do tomorrow night. Oh, Rhoda. Nineteen little friends. Oh. Nineteen air mattresses. All right. We'll make it for drinks, not dinner, okay? Good. We'll be a little easier that way. Uh, what'll I tell him? Uh, 8.30? Perfect. Uh, hello, Howard? Well, you'll never guess who this is. Well, that's uncanny. <laughs> I mean, it's been four years. Oh, is that right? Four years, three months, and two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you're right, uh, Howard. There is a lot to talk about. Uh, actually, that's why I'm calling. I'm going to have a, a little gathering at my house tomorrow night about 8.30, and I wondered if you could come. Oh, good. Uh, the address is 119 North Weatherly. Right. So uh, I'll, I'll see you then. What? Well, oh, Howard, it's sweet of you to offer, but uh, no, I have enough chairs. <laughs> no, no, glasses aren't any problem either. So. Well, uh, listen, uh, Howard, I've got to get off the uh, phone. I, uh, I have something in the stove. I, uh, so I, what? Oh, Howard, that's sweet of you to offer at your place? <laughs> no, it really, it's, it's no problem. Uh, Howard, listen, I've got to go. Uh, my bath water is running over, so I, I'll... Be in... Well, thank you, Howard. Uh, coming in, ju in just a minute. Howard, listen, I really... I must go, uh, so I'll, I'll see you Friday night, uh, tomorrow night. Right, goodbye. Oh. Oh, I remember. I remember. I remember why I broke off with Howard. <laughs> go on. Too much. Too much... Loving, too much understanding, too much giving, too much. It's impossible to hold a normal conversation with him. Maybe I can call him back and tell him I'm sick. If it weren't for the fact that I have the phone in my hands and I'm already dialing Armand's number, I'd say, of course, sure. But under the circumstances, call it off. Call off a cleft chin. <laughs> Hello, Armand. Armand, this is Rhoda Morgenstern. <laughs> yeah, you remember me. We met when you were under my car. <laughs> oh, yes, right, that's me. <laughs> uh, listen, I thought I'd give you a buzz and see how you and your arm are getting along. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Listen, Armand, uh, while I have you on the phone, um, tomorrow night a friend of mine is having some people over, and I wondered if you'd care to drop by just so I can take a look at the patient. <laughs> 
Oh, great. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, it's 119 North Weatherly. Right. What? Oh, of course. Lovely. <laughs> yes. See you then, Armand. Bye. Am I smiling, Mary? <laughs> yeah. Was I smiling when I talked to him? Well, you sure. Good. Because if I'm smiling now, that means I can smile anytime. I can even smile tomorrow night when you and I have our little fivesome. Our little fivesome? That's right. Armand is bringing his wife. <laughs> Everybody will have eaten dinner. Oh, that's just right. How can you gorge yourself like that and stay so skinny? I'm going crazy with hunger. Well, eat something. I can't. I gotta lose 10 pounds by 8.30. <laughs> this dress is all wrong, Mayor. I wonder if I should have worn my pantsuit. Maybe I should call my date, see what his wife's wearing. <laughs> you really had no idea, no hint at all that he was married? No idea at all. But I'll tell you, I was thinking about it this morning. And I don't feel strange in the least about going out with the divorced person. What do you mean divorced? He's married. Now he's married. <laughs> and suppose now he's happily married? You know, sometimes you're very depressing. <laughs> Boy, I wish they'd get here. No, I don't. I just wish it were over. Well, you're nervous over nothing, man. <laughs> and I don't see what your big gripe is about Howard. I mean, so he likes you. No, 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 Rhoda, he doesn't like me. He likes me. All that love just rushing at you. That, as my grandmother used to say, should be the worst thing that should happen to you. Oh, get that stuff away from me. I'm fainting from hunger. Rhoda, it isn't going to kill you to eat something. Break my diet the day I see almond? <laughs> Not a chance. Geronimo. Hello, I'm Mary Richards. Good evening. I'm Almond Linton, and this is my wife, Mrs. Almond Linton. <laughs> Call me Mrs. Armand Lynn. We've only been married for three weeks. <laughs> and that's how Rhonda and I met. Rhoda. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Rhoda. Uh, Armand and I think it's just wonderful of you to have us over. I mean, considering how you met. I mean, I think it's just super that we should all be good friends, isn't it? <laughs> When I ran over almonds, I never dreamt I'd find myself a new girlfriend, Nan. <laughs> gotcha! Oh, oh. How are you? Yeah, I just had to get that on film after all these years. Oh, man. Oh, oh. oh Mary. Oh, how are you? I can't believe it. Mary! Just trying to stop me. I must be kidding. After all these years, do I want to come in? Boy, oh boy, is she wonderful? Uh. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm another person in the room. Rhoda Morgenstern. Oh, how would I know? How do you do? And this is my date, Mr. and Mrs. Armand. <laughs> Excuse me. I strained my arm. Can I get you a drink? Oh, sure, Mary. The, uh, the usual. Uh, the usual? Yeah. Scotch and... Scotch and... Scotch and soda. Yeah, I knew you'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, I just can't get over how you look. Terrific! A1 terrific. Isn't that little gal there the most gorgeous thing on the earth? Isn't she? Oh, I'm supposed to answer that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. She certainly is the... Uh... A1 terrific. Yeah. Power. That's very nice of you to say, but really... Oh, no, no, no. Come on. 
Who's uh, more gorgeous than you? Oh, Howard. No, no. Name one person. <laughs> Lots of people. Who? Well, there's... Her! <laughs> well, after all, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? <laughs> I mean, Mary is great looking and Nancy's gorgeous. <laughs> Rhoda's nice looking, too. Yeah. Faye, hey, guess how long it's been since Mary and I saw each other. No, come on, take a, just take a pot shot. Howard, they're not interested in guessing how long it's been. Oh, well, all right. I'll tell you. The last time I saw Mary was the 4th of July, 1966. Oh, and you remember it because it was Independence Day. No, because it's the last time I saw Mary. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think I'll just go see if there are some more rough uh, bacon curls. Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. I don't want to spoil my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that woman. Boy, are we in for a treat. You are looking at the greatest little gourmet cook in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> uh, Rhoda, uh, could I see you in the kitchen for sure. just a moment? Excuse me, Armin. Certainly. And then. Oh, and Howard. Rhoda, I thought 8.30 so obviously meant after dinner. Maybe you could whip up something quick. Huh? Whip up something quick. Right, right. I, uh, yes, I can whip up a carrot. I can, uh, whip up uh, a baked potato. Nothing, nothing. The only thing I have in my refrigerator is a light bulb. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm just going to have to go out there and tell them. I'm, uh, what else can I do? So I don't know what you'd be cooking. Either a chicken in a pineapple shell or duckling with wine sauce. <laughs> Uh, listen, everybody, on, on the subject of the uh, duck in the wine sauce, there's, there's been a, a kind of an interesting uh, situation, and, and the situation is that uh, you thought that this was for dinner, and, and of all things, <laughs> it's not. Oh, you're, you're saying this isn't for dinner? Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. I, yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter because, uh, because, uh... Well, because we've eaten. We had a late lunch before we came here. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we did, right before. And also, I had a very big breakfast. We're stuffed. Well, well, if you're sure. Oh, yeah, really. <sighs> Say, this is such a nice apartment. Don't you think this is a nice apartment, Nancy? Oh, I, I certainly do. It's really pleasant. Incidentally, are there any more of those, uh... Bacon curls? Yeah. Um, no. How about a carrot? <laughs> Thank you. You know, Mayor, you... I just can't get over how you look. I mean, you are really something, Mayor. Most gals, you know, look their best when they're in their 20s, but this little gal here, I telling you, Mary, the older you get, the sexier you look. Uh, Howard... Hey, I've got an idea for posterity. Yeah, that's a good idea. Pictures. Who knows when Nance and I will see each other again. <laughs> Howard, I mean, you, you really want to do that now? Oh. Oh, no, we can wait till after dinner. And, oh. Isn't that funny? Why do I think we're going to have dinner? <laughs> Idea, Howard, well, why don't you take some pictures of us all? Oh, okay. Oh, come here. Help me out here, Armin. I'm dying to get a couple of Mare and I together, you know? Well, I'm not sure I know about this kind of camera. What's to know? You just push the button there. Well, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. It's really all my fault. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all right. I don't know how to apologize. It's... Uh, no, it's, listen, it's all right. It's uh, just the pictures I took of the total eclipse of the sun. <laughs> Mary, I, I think we'd better be going. We both want to thank you for a lovely evening, and the bacon curls were delicious. I'll, I'll get your coats. Well, I have to get up early in the morning anyway. I'm playing golf. <laughs> it's snowing. Oh, uh, well, I'm not that good. <laughs> good night. Uh, Goodbye. We enjoyed it. Have to do it again. Yeah, assuredly. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. The next uh, total eclipse in 
Minneapolis is in 2099. No kidding. Yeah. Well, of course, there's a partial in uh, 1979. That's only nine years. Excuse me, please. I'm going into the kitchen, and I'm not coming out until I find something edible. <sighs> Mary, you're not tired or anything. Uh, well, I, I am a little. It's been a kind of a long evening. Yes, and I know what you've been thinking all evening, too. Oh, no, no, I haven't. Yes, yes, you have. You've been thinking what I've been thinking. How great we are together. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Well, no, no, not exactly, no. I mean, what, do you want me to say what exactly is? Well, I mean, you want me to say the words? I'll say the words. Marriage. There, I said the words. <laughs> Look, I'm not surprised at this, Mary. You're a woman. You have a right to expect uh, something to come of this. Uh, no, Howard, I don't think I have that right. Yes, ye <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, Mary, you're so great. You're so great, you'll probably understand this. Mary, I can't marry you. You, you can't? What, well, Howard, I, I understand. I really do. See, I gotta have my freedom. I gotta. See, the way things are now, Mayor, I'm free just to pick up and go uh, whenever I please, wherever I please. I mean, the sky's the limit. I get the, the desire to jet up to Duluth. One phone call. That's it. I get the urge maybe to spend a weekend in St. Paul. That's done. See, I can't be tied down. You do understand, don't you? Oh, Howard, I, I really do. I understand. No, no, I don't think you do understand. Yes, I do. Uh, see, I'd, I'd just be hurt, and, and you're saving me from no. all that hurt. I mean, wow, I, I never knew anyone who saved me from so much hurt. I... I better go. Even the sound of your voice makes me crazy. If you say one more word, you'll make me change my mind. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Where's my coat? <laughs> Mary Richards. Little Mary Richards. Say, Mary, you know something? I'd like to have something of yours, you know, to remember tonight. Uh, uh well, uh... Oh, no, come on, that's too nice. Here, let me pay you for it. Oh, no, Howard, really, it's broken. I mean, it mm. needs flint and it leaks fluid. I... Come on, tell me, insist. 10, 20, 28. Howard, please, just take it. Well, thanks, Mayor. Mary, no goodbyes, huh? Right. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye. <laughs> Keep it. What's that? Next time I'm asked out, no matter how lonely I feel, I'm not gonna say yes unless it's a couple I really like. <laughs> Thank you. 